Welcome to the first in a new series of motorsport programmes. Over the next few months, we'll be here on ITV every week when there's no Formula One, bringing you action from two of the world's top racing championships. In the commentary box will be our expert, Simon Taylor, and he'll also have all the inside information on the cars and the drivers. This is the hot seat for many of tomorrow's F1 stars, Formula 3000. We'll be previewing their series later in the programme. But this week, we're concentrating on round one of the FIA GT Championship. And that promises to be a storming series. It's generally accepted in motor racing circles that if you can finish in the top three in Formula 3000, you've got what it takes to shine in F1. This year's lineup of international talent bodes well for a fascinating series. And if the racing is anything like as dramatic as last year, we're in for a real treat. The 1996 championship went right down to the wire at the final race at Hockenheim. All season long, two drivers had dominated the racing. German Jörg Muller for RSM Marco and the Swede Kenny Brack racing for Supernova, run by the Englishman David Sears. Lap after lap, they raced nose to tail. When Muller took the lead at half distance, the championship looked over for Brack in the black car. But it was to end in tears two laps later. The stewards penalized Brack for dangerous driving, leaving Muller champion by just one point. The Sears team aren't used to coming second. This season, they're certain to come out fighting. The cars are all identical loaders with sealed Ford Zytec 3-litre engines, which guarantees close racing. It's all down to the drivers. The main appeal of it is that from Formula One team manager's point of view and from a driver's point of view, they know that they can compete in equal cars with equal engines and therefore the best drivers tend to come through. However, the driver is only as good as his team and obviously if the team is not preparing a reliable car, then he's not going to finish or win the race. So. It's up to us to provide them with a clockwork car that will be there from start to finish. And winding up David's clockwork cars are two rising stars, Frenchman Laurent Redon and Ricardo Zonta. The flying Brazilian is aiming for F1 within two years. Although that mishap testing in Portugal blotted his copybook. Santa's main challenge comes from Juan Pablo Montoya. During pre-season testing, the canny Colombian spent more time socializing around the pits than on the track. But when he did go out for a couple of laps, he was usually quickest. And there's Jason Watt. After a disappointing 1996 in touring cars, the ever-cheerful Dane is hoping F3000 will get him closer to the podium. But whether they win or spin, we'll be keeping a close eye on the handful of British drivers. Jamie Davis was eighth in last year's British F3 Championship and surprised many, except himself, by his pace in testing. He's been winning races since he was karting at 14. And the likeable Somerset lad is the first to admit that those early days taught him all about racecraft. He's very positive about his next move. <laughs> Formula One is where I want to be, so uh, you know it's a good stepping stone now. I think um, it's going to be extremely competitive this year. I'd love to think that I could win the championship, but uh, you know you've got to uh, just take each race as it comes, really, and, uh, and just do the best you can. And hopefully it'll be good enough. Northern Ireland's hopes rest with Dino Morelli. He's getting another chance after a bad crash in his first season in F3000. It's brilliant, you know, I had a big accident two years ago and I've got the chance of a lifetime really and I've got to make the most of it this year. Um, we're one year ahead doing European this year and, uh, you know, it's looking pretty good so far. And watch out for the black DC Cook car, driven by last year's Renault Sport champion David Cook. It's a big step up. The former British junior ski champion knows he's got a fight on his hands for points this season. I think it's going to be very competitive. It's looking at the testing times at the moment, it's, it's a little bit difficult to say, but so many good drivers who were in 3000 last year coming from British, French, and Italian Formula 3 and German Formula 3. And you know, there's just a massive group of good drivers. And, at the moment, it's impossible to say who's, who's going to uh, win the championship. 
winning the championship isn't really an option for young Christian Horner. This is his first big opportunity, and he's only here because of his own never-say-die search for money. As a British driver, it, it's very hard to, to, to make the step to Formula One these days. Budgets are ever-increasing in this formula, um, but I worked very hard over the winter and managed to put a good package in place. To come to a new team with, although it's a new team, there's a lot of experienced personnel here, um, and I'm using Formula 3000 because it competes at some of the supporting Grand Prix, and we do almost all the European Grand Prix tracks as well. So it's it's an ideal stepping stone for a, a young driver aspiring to get into Formula One. Gareth Rees dominated last year's British Formula 2 Championship, and this year he's been testing for the McLaren F1 team. He's been well on the pace at all the pre-season tests, and he knows where his main challenge will come from. There's about nine or ten guys who could possibly win each race. I mean, I think the favourites are going to be Supernova again, with uh, Zonta and Radon. Um, I think Jamie Davis, my, uh, my compatriot with Dams next order was there, he's going to be quick. Uh, Ayari, they say, is fast, driving for Astromega. Uh, Montoya, I think, is, is quick. He's with the championship winning team last year. So there's, there's six, seven, eight, nine drivers who, who can win each time out, so it should be a good season. Stephen Watson is an F3000 veteran, and he's good fun in the nightclubs. But do we call him a British driver or not? I was born in Southern Africa. My father's English, my mother's Dutch, and I have a British passport, so you work it out between that. Just to confuse us further, he drives for an Italian team. There's a late entry, 95 British F3 champion Oliver Gavin. If anyone deserves a break, it's Ollie. But so far, he's only entered for the first race at Silverstone. You can see it here on ITV in two weeks' time. Join us then.